Arizona's blooming season is coming. The blossoms will add more beauty to Arizona trees like Palo Verde. Besides those colorful flowers you might see on the tree, have you ever paid attention to those not so colorful leaves? What do the leaves on the tree look like? Are there two identical leaves on the same tree? Different trees, different leaves on the same tree share almost the same genetic information but locate differently. Display different colors, shapes, and textures and respond differently to seasonal changes, that is to stay on or fall off a tree. When we take a snapshot of the trees in low resolution, the complexity of individual leaves will be blurred. It is almost impossible to differentiate individual leaves since they are averaged out. As we take a closer look at the tree, by increasing the resolution, we'll gradually see pop subpopulations of cells and their colors, shapes, textures, and eventually differentiate individual leaves from each other among hundreds of thousands of them. Just as leaves on a tree, cells in the multicellular organisms are not created equal. Even within the same tissue, genetically similar cells do not necessarily behave alike. Some divide rapidly, while others slowly. Some thrive and survive under stress, while others die. Cell-to-cell -cell difference, or we call it cellular heterogeneity, is an inherent feature of a cell population. In some cases, this heterogeneity can be dramatic, such that a subpopulation of cells, like the dark green ones, can dominate the population behavior and become the driving force of diseases like cancer. However, currently, most biological research are set at the population level, which depends on using large numbers of cells and average measure parameters. Well, when we could consider the color transition from light to dark represents normal to precancerous to cancer states of cells, single cell analysis will report a distribution of colors like light yellow, ivory, light green, olive green, or dark green, and help us identify those functionally important subpopulations closely related to cancer initiation or progression. While the population study is like a blender, it is prone to report an intermediate or average value like green and cover up the presence of functionally important subpopulations. So single cell analysis enables us to understand the cell-cell differences more precisely and find out better diagnostic or therapeutic methods for cancer. No cells are created equal and no cell is an island. Previously, our view towards cancer is nothing more than cancer cells talking to themselves in endless monologues. Instead, in most tumor tissue, in addition to cells at different stages of cancer progression, there are eight or more types of cells. Cancer cells and precancerous cells are in continuously communication with their non-cancerous neighbors, just as what police, gangsters, companions, and citizens do in the community. Cancer stem cells will give rise to multiple cell types, while cancer-associated normal cells work coordinately to form the structural framework for tumor growth. Cells forming the blood vessels support the tumor tissue by supplying oxygen and nutrients. A variety of immune cells are also found in a tumor microenvironment. Are they all loyal soldiers guarding the body? No. Some of them can induce the death of cancer cells, while others might be kidnapped by cancer cells and they are actually providing their growth conditions. 
under some circumstances, the most aggressive cells, we could say the dark green ones, can invade normal tissue and grow in other parts of the body, which become secondary or metastatic tumor. Just like gangsters flee in the country and commit multi-country crimes. <laughs> so cell-cell communication signals are used by each cell type to encourage or limit the growth of other cell types in the cell community. Then we might start to wonder, in a tumor tissue society, how do those cells differ from each other? And how do the cells talk to their neighbors? First, we could wonder, what is the population density of cells in the cancer cell community? Do you know how many cells are there in the tumor tissue of one cubic centimeter, about the size of a peanut? One to 10 billion cells, billion starting with a B. <laughs> it is hard to imagine how many interactions are taking place at the single cell level. <coughs> so in my lab, Center for Biosignatures Discovery Automation in Biodesign Institute at Arizona State University, we have developed a set of advanced technologies, including lo loading those teeny tiny cells into micro wells, measuring cellular phenotypes, such as how they consume oxygen, and harvesting single cells out of those micro wells and analyzing their transcriptome, which is the whole set of RNA from a single cell. Using these technologies, we are able to study the alteration of gene transcriptions as a result of cell cell interactions. Here, we could consider happy, indifferent, and unhappy cells represent normal precancerous and cancer cells. We're looking into how happy, indifferent, and unhappy cells talk to their peers. We also put one happy and one unhappy cell together and see what will happen. We even placed one happy cell into a group of unhappy cells and see how do they talk to each other and vice versa. We could envisage several scenarios, like unhappy cells inhibit the growth of happy cells, or happy cells are actually providing the shelter for those unhappy cells and serve their growth, or unhappy cells evade the guard of happy cells. A deeper understanding of these scenarios will inspire cancer therapy development. Given that, cells are dependent on their nearby microenvironment for their growth. Maybe we could attack the cells that form the structural framework for the tumor growth, inhibit the dialogue or communication within the microenvironment, and ultimately inhibit the growth of tumor. Thank you.